Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Toastmaster Bay to Bay, featuring speakers from San Francisco all the way to Monterey Bay. Today, we're going to show you a mini version of what we have as our regular Toastmaster meeting, a condensed version. Essentially, it's going to be divided into two segments. The segments, of course, will have our speakers, and then we have those valuable evaluation for the feedback. In between those segments, we're also going to have a role in a treat musical Toastmaster. So let me get into our program right away. We have our first speaker. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He is an author, a coach, and he has written a book. Howard Miller coaches and he leads workshops on teaching managers how to avoid certain traps in management. The name of his book is The Manager's Trap, 13 and a half pitfalls to avoid. Let's help me welcome our first speaker, Howard Miller, with his speech about avoiding management pitfalls. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Greg had a problem employee named Philip. Greg talked to Philip, and he, wasn't, he just wasn't meeting standards. And he told him if he didn't shape up in 90 days, he'd be let go. Well, Philip didn't shape up. So 90 days later, Greg called Philip into his office. And he said, I'm sorry. It hasn't changed. You're fired. Philip was stunned. He was stunned, he, and, and Greg, was, Greg was confused because he's like, I don't, I don't understand. I told you if you didn't shape up, you would be let go. And Philip said, well, I know you said I'd be let go, but you didn't tell me I'd be fired. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. That's what one of my, my, the managers in one of my workshops told me actually happened to him. Now, how could this happen? Is Philip a blithering idiot? Possibly. We can't ignore that fact. He could be a blithering idiot. But let's think about it. What else could let go mean? Well, it could mean let go to another job, you know, another role, another position, let go to another job in the company, let go to another department, let go to another city, let go to part time. It, it could mean lots of things besides you're fired. See, we hear what we want to hear and what we believe. Remember when we were kids? And we played the telephone game where there was a message that started here and it went to here, to here, to here, and to here, and it was a different message. Guess what? Adults could play the game because we mess it up just as well. We believe what we believe, we think what we think, and we hear what we hear. And as managers, you have to go in and increase productivity and make sure you get results. But you're dealing with all this muck of miscommunication. That's the challenges managers have. I did write a book, The Manager Trap, 13 and a half pitfalls to avoid. Because the managers, you know, you could be so technical. You could know, you, you've been an electrical engineer, so why can't you manage the electrical engineers? And you walk in, and all of a sudden it's all different. Because of this miscommunication, and all of a sudden, you're in this trap. Get me out, because you don't know how to, how to help them. Well, sometimes what it just comes down to is things we're not, the, the unconscious things that you're not thinking about that cause you to be in the trap. Good news, there is ways out of the traps. What, what I'd like to talk to you about is just a couple of those pitfalls. That's what I want to share with you here. And if there's time, a solution. But I don't, I don't guarantee that right now. I want to, because I want to tell you some of the traps. Like, for example, right now, one of the traps I want to talk to you about is assuming what certain words mean. Now, you know the joke about what happens when you assume. But, so, what do I, so when I talk about certain words, let me, let me tell you, when I teach one of my management workshops, I put up words, not complicated words, but words like frequently, occasionally, always, never. I put these words up, and I say, OK, everyone take out a piece of paper. And on a scale of 0 to 100, 100 being the highest, if someone said to you, I frequently do this, what number comes to your mind? Right? So I have everyone write this down for frequently. Well, I get ranges of 20 to 85. 
for one word, for frequently. I'll get the same for sometimes. And guess what? Always. I know when I think always, I think 100 for always, zero for never. Only one time, and I've done this at least 50 times, only one time did the entire class of managers put down 100 for always and zero for never. People from their experience put down 90, 85, 99.8. That's the mortgage brokers. They're always dealing in percentages. You know, they're just, it, it's, it's mind boggling what, what they put down for these common words. Well, if we don't have the same definition for common words, how are we going to have the same definition for opinions where we completely disagree? It's a big challenge. So we really, one of the traps managers will fall into, and others, we assume what certain words mean, as opposed to clarifying them. Another one. I want you to all think about something. I want you to think of a four-letter word beginning with F. Don't go there. We're keeping this clean. Four-letter word beginning with F that managers should avoid. What's a four-letter word beginning with F managers should avoid? Now, if I were to ask a group of managers, a lot of them say, fail, and I'm like, no, it's OK to fail. Fail means you've tried. The word I'm thinking of is fair. Managers shouldn't use the word fair. Why? Well, what's fair? Fair is different for you, 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 you. Everyone has a different definition of fair. Fair is subjective. And if you get into a conversation about fair, you will not win. You'll get lower and lower in that trap. So what the theme fair, and I mean that literally and metaphorically, the word fair. You don't want to use that word, nor do you want to use a lot of subjective words, which as human beings we use. Oh, they're not enthusiastic enough. They're not happy enough. That was rude. You, 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 we've all experienced someone saying this to us. And as managers, as leaders, it's how do you take that subjectivity and make it objective? That is one of the biggest traps. And when you start doing that, you're starting to climb the walls out of that trap and getting to a place where you experience the joys and successes of being a manager. When you are taking the subjectivity, making it objective, you're able to help your team. You're able to listen greater, ask questions which lead to solutions, and avoid the manager trap. Thank you. So, Howard, do you always frequently, oftentimes, give such fair speeches? <laughs> <laughs> always. My definition of always. How long have you been in Toastmaster? Actually, I've only been in Toastmasters this year. Oh. What's the name of your club? Uh, it, it's Pro Toasties, and it's based in uh, San Mateo. Oh. <laughs> I've noticed in your biography that you are actually an actor as well. I am. An actor, a writer, a trainer, a teacher. So why do you need Toastmaster? <laughs> well, actually, because all, while all those are related, they all have special, they all have special unique qualities. And I want to get more back into speaking a bit more. And Toastmasters helps me hone in on my speech, really focus in on the certain parts so that I can, I get great suggestions, and then I can go take it and get back on tour. Well, that's pretty encouraging to know an actor actually needs Toastmaster, too. Absolutely. So, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, we're going to get to the second portion of it. The second portion of a Toastmaster meeting has to do with evaluation. The evaluation portion, let me just quickly say something about that since some of your audience may not quite know what it is. As my father, the Tai Chi master, you would say, practice does not make perfect. He says practice makes permanent. So if you're doing it incorrectly, you do it permanently incorrectly. Here and where is the valuable part of the feedback. We're going to bring somebody else to come up here and, and let us know what how it did well and where he could improve. My evaluator today is none other than our past district governor, 
but he also belongs to the San Mateo Toastmaster Club. Let me welcome Tony de Leon. Tony. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, but most of all, Howard. Howard, what a dynamic speech. I thought I was going to get another boring speech on how to be a manager. What I really enjoyed about your speech is that you shared a story, a story of Greg and Philip. And the scenario you gave us was something that maybe we can all relate to. Maybe at one time a manager has approached us, or we've been a manager, and we approach an employee, and come up with a word, need to shape up. And, I, and to hear from someone else, it's not specific enough. So I think you made a great point there. So you got all of us involved because we're either managers or we're employees, or we're both. Many times we're, we're stuck in the middle. On your opening, I did enjoy it, but what I would have liked to see a little bit more, and you were very good at it at this later on, is the use of your voice to emphasize the word fire. Because in the beginning, it was kind of mild. And, you know, just to, and what you did really well was to pause, but maybe bring that voice up and forcefully say, you're fired. It's not a joke. You're fired. Because then it gets us into a mindset that this is a very serious error on the employee, but at the same time, might be a serious error on the manager. So that was a great illustration. Another thing I enjoyed more about your vocal variety, I call this vocal EKG. Many times a speaker will speak and they'll go into a kind of a constant tone, even though the delivery of the message is great. You lose a little bit of interest, but your, the, I guess the emphasis you have in your voice and you kept the excitement up and gave us a little bit low, so you were talking from the ground a little bit here. That really entertained us as we got informed. So I really love speeches that are informative, yet entertaining. So, Howard, fantastic job. I'm, I'm gonna make one more recommendation. Maybe an overused gesture uh, is the hands like this. So uh, maybe work the room a little bit more, because I think you stood a little bit here too, too much, and you had the use of the floor. So maybe speaking to an audience member a little bit closer here, and maybe telling Robert a story here, and looking to the back, will get us a little bit more involved. But wonderful presentation. I'm going to check out your book and try to figure out what that one half is. <laughs> Adam Toastmaster. Thank you, Tony. So that is the first portion of our program. We also have a roll-in, and you are in for a treat, because I'll tell you one thing that Toastmaster allow you to have, which is creative expressions. This coming up called the roll-in, we're actually going to hear part of Toastmaster piece put to music. This is produced by Robin Van Horn, who was actually a, an evaluator here one time, wasn't he? And what he's done was he's just so grateful for his 10 years experience in Toastmaster, he, he composed a song about that. So Robert is a pianist, he's a composer, he's a Toastmaster. Put all that together and you will have something very, really interesting. As an ode to Toastmaster, here is his song called, Here's to the People. Why don't we roll the tape and let's hear what that's all about. And with skill, you'll climb the highest hill and give a toast to all of those you know. Here's to the people who speak with confidence, those master people who strive for excellence. Here's to the
Hi, everybody. Oh, was that great. Just moves my heart. So welcome back to the second portion of our program. We're going to bring up another speaker. And let me just tell you about this speaker. She loves technology, loves, 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 loves technology. So it wouldn't be surprised that the name of her speech is Social Media Marketing. Our next speaker, Sarita Agrawal, is going to talk on social media marketing. Let's welcome her. My fellow Toastmasters, last month I took the role of Area Governor for Area B1. Now I am excited but at the same time I am little scared because it's a challenging role. And when I was talking to all my club members, I realized that there is one common challenge most of them are facing and it's not just about my club or my area but it's across the Toastmaster which was how do we increase membership and how do we retain our members? When after talking to them, I realized I need to do some thinking about it because I need to help my club. I want my clubs to become distinguished. So I, I was looking at it and I realized like Madam Toastmaster said, I love technology. So why not to use that? And I said, okay, there are regular channels, regular marketing channels that we always use in our life why not use social media to market our Toastmaster to increase our membership? So my fellow Toastmaster, today I'm here to talk about my passion, marketing, and want to connect it to my second passion, which is Toastmaster. So uh, today I will talk about three specific channels, as social media is a huge, huge topic. You can spend days and hours talking about it and spend the same amount of time on those. So let's talk about three main channels which are really popular. One, Facebook. Second, LinkedIn. Third, Twitter. Let's start with Facebook. How many of you are on Facebook? Whoa, only one is not? Now, interesting question. How many of you know that we have a D4TM Facebook fan page? See? Very good. Now, one of the way we can use and all the clubs who wants to increase the membership or market their club is go to D4TM uh, web page, fan page, post your events, share with your friends. When you share on the page and you accept the event, it will show up on your specific profile page. What it does it, it lets the whole world see what event you are going to. They go and they see, oh, what's this event? Let me check out. This person is going there and they might be interested in going. So that brings you more new members. 
Now you can post picture. Our Robert who post take wonderful pictures and post those on our D4TM fan page. Get yourself tagged. Let your friends, co-workers, your colleagues know that you have been active. You are not just becoming a good speaker, but you are trying to become a good leader. So get yourself tagged, post your events, your pictures, post stories about how you have seen somebody who joined Toastmaster who was like a shy person, I cannot see, I cannot talk and now this person is a winner of a humorous speech contest or an evaluation speech contest. Post those stories, make the whole world know you have 1 billion users to target through Facebook. So it is a great, great resource to market your clubs, your events and bring in more members. You won't believe five of my friends when I used to post things about Toastmaster on my profile page asked me about Toastmaster and three of them actually joined. So I, I really believe in the power of social media. Let us talk about the second channel, LinkedIn. It is a business networking site. We have our group there called Toastmaster District 4. Now here all the district officer have, a have done a wonderful job of starting lots of discussions on what are the tips for new area governors, how can you increase membership, what are the PR activities you have done for your group, which one of them worked, which did not. So you will hear about lot of non-conventional marketing tactics and increasing membership through these channels. Add, add your profile there, in your profile say boast you are a Toastmaster, you are an area governor, you are a vice president. People should know that apart from that 40 hours, you are also so active in other activities and you are developing your leadership skills, not just improving your communication skills. Post about, post videos of your speeches if, if, you, if your club records a speech. Post any events that you want to attend. So that will actually bring lot of visibility to yourself. So you are not only marketing yourself, but at the same time giving visibility to your clubs and lo no letting other people know that okay, Toastmaster is something that can help you improve your skills. The third one is Twitter. I don't know how many of you are on Twitter, but I love Twitter. I, I am a fan of it. I keep tweeting all the time. So Twitter, again for Twitter if you want to post, there is a hashtag for D4TM, post your, talk about the speech you have given, the feedback you have got, if you were impressed by somebody else's speech, how it inspired you, motivated you, talk about those things and add the tag that will actually put you in the stream for someone who is actually searching. You can also put some other tags like being a leader improving communication, those kinds of tags. So if somebody searches for those specific tags like communication, your tweets will come in that search. So this is the way you can actually use Twitter. Twitter is like a universe as if you are standing in the sky and screaming. So always, always go and scream on Twitter. I love Twitter. So in summary, there are so many conventional marketing channels and we can always talk so much more about it. But social media being so hot, I want people to start using it, make the best use of technology and this crowdsourcing which is actually the basis of social media and sky is the limit. So never stop trying, never stop chasing or going for new members. And I am sure your clubs will flourish. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. So, Sarita, what club are you with? I belong to Adlib Masters in Area B1. And how long have you been with the club? I have been with Toastmaster for two years. That's wonderful. Now, I understand you got Toastmaster of the Year for your area before? Yes, yes. Last year, I got the award as a Toastmaster of the Year. Uh, and I am very excited to receive that uh, award and I am very blessed. Thank you. I can see why. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. And so Bay Area, you can see why we all meet time after my time after. This organization is over eight decades long. I don't look eight decades, 
but you can see that everybody who has come on board, it is a continual benefit for all of us who want to do improvement of our speech, our communication. So if you want to know more about this, I totally encourage you to go to our website, www.d4tm.org. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, <laughs> let me bring our next evaluator up. She is not only a member of four clubs, three of them are advanced, and she also is the producer of this wonderful show. Let me bring up Birgit Darson. Birgit. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, audience members, and especially Sarita, I love your energy. I can tell that you're really passionate about the topic, and social media is very near and dear to my heart. And I love how you started out by saying social media is this huge topic. And then you narrowed it down very quickly. So we knew that we weren't going to get, going to get completely overwhelmed with information. But you narrowed that down to say, well, this is social media. You told us which three channels you're going to be talking about, Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. And then you narrowed it down to how we can use that for Toastmasters. So I think that really narrowed it down in terms of your examples. I might have liked to have seen that in the title a little bit. So I wasn't sure where you're going to go with social media marketing in general. So I might have wanted to see that in the title. I really enjoyed your examples of use social media to get more members. I think that's really key. And that's what we're all trying to do in, in District 4 is to try to get more members with social media. From a content standpoint, I would have included a little bit more that LinkedIn is more for business purposes and how you can maybe get some more of your colleagues into that because Facebook is a little bit more social, Twitter is a little bit more social, Twitter and Facebook can actually be linked. And the other suggestion I would have is to actually use the stage a little bit more. But you looked so comfortable, you had great eye contact, and thank you very much for that speech. All right. Bridget, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. And that wraps up our program. I'm sorry, I wish we could go on and on, and I did go on and on. Very good, everybody. Please come up and join me in welcoming, be part of the d4tm.org. <laughs>